Hi Patreon, welcome to your tarot card reading lesson for this week. Um, so today we're going to quick just talk about the major arcana, but then we're going to focus in on the full card. So we've already kind of gone over the difference between what is the major arcana and then what is the minor or the trump cards versus the pip cards, right? Um, now the way that a lot of people will teach these cards is to talk about Kabbalah and the Tree of Life, or you might hear them talking about the Fool's Journey, because Fool is the first card, but it's also the end card, um, because it's zero. You know, and zero is a circle. Um, so it's the beginning and the end of a trip, you know, like they'll say, oh, okay, so the Fool's walking around, and, you know, then he gets this thought, and he turns to the Divine, and I don't teach it that way, because, um, I can only teach you the way that I read cards, right? Everybody reads different. So I would encourage you definitely to, the thing about tarot is we can always learn more. There's always, you know, so many different things that you can pick up on with the symbolism in the cards and each deck is different and there's just so much to learn. You could watch other people try to explain this as well, um, but I'm going to teach you the way that I read these cards. So this is the Rider Waite deck, as I said, you know, where we're going to start because it's sort of the basis of many decks. Um, now, what else did I want to say about this? Some people say that um, the difference between the major arcana and the minor is that these cards here, the majors, are about your destiny, things that you can't control or avoid. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I don't do it that way either. But as we get into tarot spreads, after we've gone through each individual card, you'll start to understand why. Now, if you have many, many major arcana cards in a spread, I would say, yeah, this is a huge deal. Because for me, these major cards are the catalyst that instill change. You know, um, the event itself may not be a huge life event, but it is maybe the catalyst for it, the trigger for it, something that um, takes your life in a new direction, okay? So it could be as simple as meeting somebody, but then that person changes your life, okay? It doesn't have to be like a big crazy drama. Um, so there are 22 of these cards, which is a little bit confusing because when you look at the last card, that says 21. 10 plus 10 plus 1 is how you read those Roman numerals because um, X is 10. So there's, why is that number 21 if there's 22 of them? Because there's zero. Because we start with zero. We don't start counting zero, one, two. We don't count the zero. So, um, But if you did, it would be 22. Does that make sense? Um, now, some people will say that this is the first card. Other people say it's the last card. Does it really matter? Not really. It can be both because circles are infinite, right? There's not a beginning or an end, and that's kind of what this card is about, really. Um, what this card really teaches us is that it's everything and it's nothing all at the same time. Whoa, mind freak, like Chris Angel, right? But this card is all about divine presence, right? Because that is also, with omnipresence, everything and nothing all at once. Spirits everywhere, right? Um, now, the person in the deck here is very androgynous. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's transgendered. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, because this card is almost always going to be about the querent or the person asking the question. On rare occasions, it's not, but typically it is. And that will also um, be clearer for you when you're looking at a spread or if you're asking a specific question. Now, um, with this one, key terms would be originality, would be motivation, um, leaping into new phases, okay? Now, it's saying... You know, this person is having this blind faith and optimism, like they're looking up at everything and nothing, at the divine, God, Allah, spirit guides, angels, source, the universe, and they're really trusting in that, right? Blind faith. Because this guy's about to walk off a cliff, and whether he, whether that dog is barking at him or not, whether he knows it, he's not afraid. Just pure faith. Um, so sometimes this can mean 
that you need to look where you're going. <laughs> um, sometimes this might mean that you have rose-colored glasses on, right? Because optimism is great up to a certain point, right? We don't want to be a fool. <laughs> but this can also just being um, mean that you're kind of misunderstood as well. Like this guy, maybe he just ran away. He's got a knapsack tied to a stick, like the classic scene that you see in a movie where I'm running away and and they wrap up their stuff like that and, and there they go, you know, with their basic needs. <laughs> this guy is just trusting he's going to end up at the right place even if he doesn't have a plan. So he might be a little bit lonely, but the dog here reminds us that we're never actually alone, that um, even though it's just him and the dog, like the dog is a protector, it's a guardian, like he's definitely going to bark and maybe grab his boot with his teeth and say, don't, don't fall off that cliff, just like an angel would for you, okay? Now, um, this could mean that you have loads of ambition. In a negative context, it could say that, yes, you are foolish, you're a little bit eccentric, um, you're coming up with wild and crazy schemes, and, you know, that maybe you're reckless, like, you're leaping before you look, you're not really thinking things through. But like I said, typically this is more about um, coming up because you need to have faith. You need to have blind faith and trust and courage. And you have to try new experiences and you have to be friendly and eager and enthused to do it. Um, some people will take this card as about incarnating because it is the first card. It's like when your soul decides, hey, I'm going to come into the world now. Um, I don't necessarily read it that way, but I don't do a lot of readings in which people are asking me, you know, about their past lives and, and, you know, what their soul purpose is. Personally, I do a lot of readings that are about, um, oh shit, this is happening right now. <laughs> Every reader is different and they all attract different kinds of clients, but that's my specialty is helping you to make the best choices. So... Anyway, um, what else did I want to say about this fella? I wrote down some, some notes here. Uh, it can be about new cycles, right? Because zero is the beginning and it's also the end, which is a circle. But maybe you're starting a new circle because it is the first and the last. Um, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the colors here. There's a lot of white. Why is the sun white instead of yellow? Why is his flower white? And the dog is white. And the mountains, they have snow. Okay, why? Well, because white represents purity and innocence. And that's so this card. It's a very youthful energy. The way that I often describe this card is like a little kid right? He's standing at the edge of a pool. And you don't really know if your parent's a strong swimmer or not, or if they're prepared to catch you or not, but you just jump right in and you trust. You have this blind faith and optimism that they are going to catch you, that they're not um, treading water above their, you know, that's above their head, that they can swim and keep you afloat and keep you alive. So <laughs> that's a lot what this card is about for me. I'm horrible at analogies, but to me that one just makes perfect sense. Um, now some people will say that the dog in this card is going to represent ego, okay? Now that's why it's important when we're talking about maybe incarnating that, you know, your ego when you first come into the world is separate from your spiritual side and that maybe it was designed to keep us safe and things like that. But if it comes up in a spread, it's maybe like your ego is getting a little bit in the way and it is looking out for you and it serves its purpose, but you need to connect back to source and have that blind faith and optimism because that's something that we um, we often do. We have a really hard time trusting and believing in things that we cannot see. That's kind of the whole point of divination and tarot readings, right? Feeling like if we know what to expect, we can be better prepared for it, that we can maybe control outcomes. So that's something. Um, but, you know, this dog, like I said, he might grab at his foot and try to keep him from going off the cliff. 
and um, he's really trying, you know, like as the ego to support us and to protect us. But maybe like in real life, we often let that ego, that dog get out of control and then we have to call Caesar Milan. So um, this is just saying, you know, turn to source. So some challenges that could come up when this is paired with, like when the next card is a swords card or an air energy type of a card, which would be um, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, any of the cards. And some of these major arcana cards are associated to different signs, but the fool is not. He's not associated to anyone in um, specific. So because he's both the beginning and the end, he's everything and nothing, right? Um, so with this one, when it's paired with like a swords or an air energy, it might say that you are about to, um, do something that is totally foreign, totally new. This could be like taking a job if, like that you're so not qualified for, like something that you have zero experience in, um, something totally new and just kind of learning trial by fire, like getting thrown into something, but being excited about it and just like kind of being a sponge and taking it all in and, and it's kind of fun, right? Now, sorry about that crazy loud noise. Um, when it's paired up next to a fire energy or a wands card, so fire signs are Leo, um, Sagittarius and Aries. What could be happening here is that you are not taking the right kind of risks and it's very dangerous. Like you could be burned, right? A total gamble. <laughs> so more of a warning. And when you see it paired up with cups or water, cancer, Pisces, um, what's the other one? Scorpio. <laughs> then maybe you're about to go into a relationship in which you will learn a lot because the other person, maybe their culture is different. Maybe their race is different. Maybe their religion is different. Maybe um, just their attitudes or belief system is different in a certain way. Um, it's an election year, you know, so actually we vote tomorrow. So maybe it's they're a Trump supporter and you're a Hillary supporter, but you're going to learn a lot from each other. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, total different polarities there, isn't it? But it's just saying um, it's an opportunity to learn and, you know, like you're coming to a place where you know nothing about it and you can just absorb this and you should be happy and enthused about it. Especially with this yellow, I do feel like a lot of happiness with this card. Um, like not even caring what the outcome is. Like just trusting, I'm going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's a new adventure. It's just fine. So to see this after a breakup, fantastic omen, right? It's like, well, whatever happens next, it's going to be amazing. I'm not even worried. It's a new adventure. Hurrah! <laughs> I, I wish every breakup was that way, right? Unfortunately, they're not. <laughs> and that's why we have the Chords of Attachment video. But um, when this card is reversed, when it shows up this way, it could be that maybe you're not feeling so free, right? And so then you try to show yourself like how much freedom you have, <laughs> trying to grasp at control of that. And so you might be gambling a lot. You could be totally crazy and reckless. This could be like, um, in some cases, like especially if it was paired with the cups or especially with the three of cups, it could be like drinking to excess, it could be um, doing drugs, things like that, just totally nutty. If, for example, it was put with a pentacles card, it could be um, totally about gambling, taking risks that are um, excessive. Like this is, for example, like in a, in a movie that you would see where somebody puts their house on a poker game with their neighbor and then they lose their home, something like that. Um, this could be squandering your resources, spending too much money, like buying stupid crap, like, you know, this could be going to the nightclub and um, buying a, I think in Las Vegas, like sometimes tables at a club are like $10,000 plus the booze. That's insane. And like maybe you only make 40000 a year. Like that's what this is, okay? Um, just for the thrill of it, like being a total flake, not showing up for things, not getting stuff done, not being responsible if it's with a pentacles card. Um, 
generally, when it's reversed, it could just be like self-sabotage, sabotaging relationships, sabotaging your jobs, just sabotaging junk in general because you're afraid to make commitments. That could be a huge one. Making choices um, on just stubbornness. Like if it's paired with fire, especially your wands, like beating your head against the wall over and over and over, even though it's not working, just like staying in that circle of everything and nothing at the same time because you're so damn stubborn. It's like, oh my goodness, you are being a fool, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, so... I don't often see this card this way as far as like selfishness and stuff goes. It could be that way, not looking out for others. A lot of like fear of commitment, like just needing freedom, um, not really wanting to learn how to participate in the world and be a citizen and, you know, stop being a dick. Um, but, you know, it can also be a very literal sense when you read it, like you're not being foolish. It's just going to depend on the layout and the question that you're asking. And this is why um, so many of us read intuitively, right? Like that the card message will change from time to time with the context of the question and um, the situation at hand and how everything is laying out. So overview in general, the quick synopsis of what this card means is just blind faith optimism, um, trusting that everything's going to be okay and then it shall. So I hope that's helpful for you and um, love and light. I will see you in two weeks when we talk about the magician. Mwah.